What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. It has been an incredibly interesting year for the PlayStation 5. And when I say incredibly interesting, of course I mean incredibly boring. Like where are the games for PS5? I've spent the entirety of the last year pretty much just replaying PS4 exclusives that I got for free with PlayStation Plus or replaying games that I wanted to platinum because I thought I had a lot of fun the first time. But it is finally time, Sony has opened the floodgates and there are new games coming to the PlayStation 5. Now, I am certainly not a super gamer and I spent most of my time with the PS4 living the college athlete life, not playing too many games, but I'm ready to game now, I'm an adult, I've got expendable income, and I'm gonna bring all these games to you guys. So let's take a look at the 2021 PlayStation 5 showcase and see what's gonna be coming up in the next year of PlayStation. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my take on all these new games. Right out of the gate, we have Knights of the Old Republic. Now, a ton of my friends are super nostalgic for this game, but I unfortunately never played it as a kid, but it is apparently one of the best pieces of Star Wars lore ever to come to gaming, and I'm excited to play it for the first time on the PlayStation 5. I'm definitely gonna give this game a look, and hopefully it'll be a really fun time. I know, I mean, just from the tiny little preview that we got for it, the graphics look pretty awesome, and I'm excited to see the Star Wars world from a new light. So, God of War Ragnarok. Now, I have not paid attention to any of the drama that cropped up the last few days over whatever characters might or might not be included in this game. And unfortunately, the rest of the game is kind of in a tough spot for me too. I didn't really get into the first God of War because I am just terrible at melee combat games. I, I died so many times just to the first boss that I got frustrated and quit the game. But I might be encouraged to retry it. Uh, I know this is one of the best stories that came to the PlayStation 4, and I guess I'd be excited to potentially play both the games back to back. I have God of War, of course, thanks to the PlayStation 5 collection on Plus. So there's a good possibility that I'll just play both those games back to back on the easiest possible difficulty and see if I can make it through just to play the stories. Forspoken is probably the most outside the box game that I'm actually interested in this time around. Now I have watched probably four or five PlayStation showcases over the years and there's always a ton of games that I'm just like, nah, not for me. And I think Forspoken might have fallen into that category a few years ago, but I'm just so interested to see the life of this girl who falls out of New York City and goes into this magical world, Athea, and then she has to explore and learn these new powers. Honestly, I saw the game, I thought it was infamous, and I was really excited for it. Uh, then I found out that it was not infamous, and I was kinda like, eh, but I still think I wanna play it. So, Forspoken is definitely one I'll keep on my radar. I'm gonna be cautious when I'm buying games coming up. Obviously, I do have the digital PlayStation 5, so I don't wanna go too crazy with the pre-orders, but this is what I'm gonna look out for. It looks like a lot of fun to try out. Well, I just said that I was trying not to pre-order because of my digital PS5, but the story trailer absolutely sold me on this game, and I know this is probably a cautious tale. Deathloop is coming out literally the day after this video releases, and I have pre-ordered it because I got 10% off with PS Plus. So yeah, I'm definitely a sucker, but I figured I was gonna end up playing this game anyway. I absolutely love time loop movies, and this is a time loop game, so I'm really excited to see that concept come to life in a game. The characters look super fun and creative, you're like competing with another assassin, and you've got these eight scientists to take out, so I'm excited to take on this never-ending party and see what it's all cracked out to be. Honestly, it doesn't look like it's gonna have hundreds of hours of gameplay, like it might just be a shorter game, kind of like Stanley Parable or something like that but I'm super excited to try it out and just see what I think. So that will definitely be the next video out on this channel. Be sure to look out for that. I honestly can't wait to play a PlayStation 5 launch title 11 months later. So right now, Marvel Studios has its gaming properties split between two studios. And let's just say Insomniac has been a little more successful than Square Enix in their pursuits so far. But I think Guardians of the Galaxy could change their pace a little bit. I think that the Avengers game, in spite of me not having played it, I did watch a little bit of gameplay of it, 
Uh, I think the reason they failed there was just because they were trying to do an ensemble thing and trying to match up with what was in the movies and also let you play as whatever character you want and it was just really the wrong approach. But I'm hoping they can turn it around with Guardians of the Galaxy. It looks really interesting. Because of the Square Enix track record, I'm definitely gonna be waiting on this one until the reviews come out to check it out. But if it does look interesting enough, I will probably play it. I would love to expand on the Guardians of the Galaxy lore. I really have never been able to bring myself to read a comic book, so this would probably be the only way of me actually expanding my knowledge of the Guardians universe. I really hope this game is good so I can enjoy these characters for who they are rather than their fantastic portrayals by uh, Chris Pratt and Bradley Cooper. So just like I just said, Insomniac has been fantastically successful with their Spider-Man games. I absolutely love Spider-Man. When I first got my PlayStation, I had actually sold my PS4 the same night that I was like 50% of the way through Spider-Man. So five months later when I bought my PS5, that was the game I played nonstop for almost 100 hours and I burned myself out on it, so hopefully one day I'll get past the first 20 minutes of Miles Morales, but I've got two years to do it because Spider-Man 2 is not coming out until 2023, but obviously when it comes out, I'm playing that, no doubt about it. I love Spider-Man, my favorite superhero, and I'm really excited to see maybe there will be a co-op mode in this new game. I know there's gonna be two Spider-Man, a lot to juggle for a normal story, so maybe co-op, that would be awesome. What can I say? That that's the I see a teaser for Wolverine. I like the teaser. <laughs> Insomniac, you'll probably you'll probably end up doing a good job with that. So yeah, I'll play that too. So now we get to some re-releases, and I think we're past the games that I'm probably 100 percent gonna buy, and we're into the games that eh, definitely maybe not gonna buy. So Alan Wake is being remastered for the PlayStation 5. Now, I never played this originally, but even from the trailer that I saw, it didn't look like the graphics were getting buffed that hard. So if I do end up playing this one, I might just pick it up for the Xbox 360, which I still have one of down in the corner there, and play it that way. It'd be a lot cheaper than paying 60 bucks to see it in 4K. Apparently, Naughty Dog was not satisfied with their best-selling game of all time, so they're gonna re-release it along with Lost Legacy, which should help it climb up to that 60 dollar price tag but i played both of these games on the ps4 i'm gonna replay uncharted 4 but i'm just gonna replay the playstation 4 version because i have that for free already uh, i don't see a reason to buy this game if you've never played them before maybe it's a good buy for you but again it'll probably just be cheaper if you just digitally buy the playstation 4 versions of these games separately and play them that way no stop we're not i i swear i bought this game three times i'm not no I Seriously, stop. I we're not I'm not paying for Grand Theft Auto 5 again. I don't care what you do to the game. The the jump from PS3 to PS4, that was a great move. The the game looks like crap on PS3 and it looks amazing on PS4. It doesn't look any better. I the whole trailer doesn't look good. Just stop releasing Grand Theft Auto 5. Seriously, guys, do not spend your money on this. Please save your money for the next new Rockstar game that is not a boredom simulator. I'm talking about Red Dead Redemption. All right, everyone get your caps locks keys on because this is the part of the video where I'm going to talk about the games that I'm just not going to play. And uh, it's just games I'm either not interested in, I don't care about the story, don't care about whatever else, but that's just the reality. I probably won't play these games. I don't think anyone could honestly play every single game from the showcase, but these in particular, I'm just going to say a few things about them and that's all. Uh, I never got into Rainbow Six Siege initially. This does look like it could be an interesting co-op game, so this is probably the one that's closest to me actually playing it. But again, not into the Rainbow Six games, so there's a low chance of me actually buying this one. Uh, if there's anything we don't need, it is another free-to-play Battle Royale. This one is definitely getting ignored. Okay, so this one also could turn me. Uh, it looks like another kind of mystical game where your character has some pretty interesting powers. As far as the more magical games, I think if I go with anyone, it'll be Forspoken over Ghostwire, but I'm definitely open to changing my mind if this game does turn out to be like a 10 out of 10. Uh, I guess this is a virtual concert experience. You're supposed to play on your PlayStation. Yeah, don't care about Radiohead. Not gonna buy this. I don't care if it's free. I'm, I'm not gonna download it either, so <laughs> whatever. 
an anime style monster slasher this one uh looks like just not my style of game i'm not super into the uh the japanese art stylings and whatever like that also i think this is kind of like a play this game if you'd like to look at a lot of booty but uh it's probably not one that i will pick up so that's all i have to say about that the racing sims for xbox and playstation these are ones that have always felt pretty samey to me the gran turismo and the forza i have never really gotten into these if i do play a racing game it's just gonna be need for speed i know it's like a super normie game but honestly i cannot handle any game where your car gets realistically destroyed because that is just miserable to play i love a good need for speed you just crash into 50 cops and then you keep driving and you make it home safely so if i do put any hours into racing it's gonna be there it's not gonna be gran turismo so i think that is all of the games that were actually featured in the showcase i do want to talk about two more things though because there are games that weren't featured but i am going to be playing them for sure so far cry 6 was an interesting exclusion from the presentation i think the only reason they may not have shown it is because xbox has paid for a lot of marketing around far cry 6 but this one looks like a ton of fun again again these are some of the only good co-op shooters that actually come out for modern consoles and that is actually pretty rare i know me and my friend josh always look for a good co-op game to play through and that's how i ended up doing the platinums for both ghost recons in the last year and also we attempted far cry 4 but we kind of got over it the uh, the trophies aren't as much fun to grind out on those games i did feel a little burned on far cry 5 i just thought the map was too big to navigate around but i think i'm gonna give it another shot because i know that there is a good story behind it so i really will give it another try and i think i'm gonna end up buying six either way it just looks like way too much fun the pet system looks awesome and again co-op is the thing that i'm looking for really hoping that josh with his ps4 is still able to play with me get a ps5 you loser <laughs> And the last game that I will definitely be buying as soon as it finally comes out, the game that I think was supposed to be a launch title and then a Christmas title and then a spring title is now been delayed like two full years. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga has been about to come out for so long now. I have played every single Lego Star Wars game. I absolutely love them and I can't wait to play this one. Please, please don't mess it up. I really hope that I can just ignore the uh, voice acting in it. I know that's going to be so criminal, but I'm sure that the game will still have tons of genuine fun, and I cannot wait to have all the Star Wars canon available to me in one single LEGO game. So that is it. All the games from the PlayStation Showcase and the rest that I'll probably be playing over the next year, or I guess 16 million years if you count Wolverine and Spider-Man 2. I do, again, have the digital version of the PS5, so I'm going to be cautious. I'm going to wait for reviews to come out. I know I already pre-ordered Deathloop, so I'm really hoping I don't get burned on that one. But the rest of them, I'm going to try to wait it out. But I am so, so excited to just finally play some new games. It really feels like we've gone a year without a single new video game release. I know games have come out, but it just feels like they have not. Make sure you guys hit that like button if you like this video. And subscribe if you guys want to see me play through any of the games that we talked about. If you really want to see a game, get a million of your friends to subscribe. And all of you comment that game, and I will definitely buy it and play it. As always, I have been Jamster, and I'm out. There's no way to collect the bouncy balls. Oh, interesting.